Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Matter 365 uh, training video. Today, we are joined by a special guest, Sean Dillman. He is a lawyer and a legal technology coach. He's going to be assisting me in taking us through some of the features of OneNote and how it can be best used with your practice. As you know, if you're a Matter 365 subscriber, we have incorporated a, you know, a lot of different features within Microsoft applications. We've given a webinar on Planner. We've given a webinar on OneDrive. And today we're going to be talking and focusing on OneNote. So, Sean, why don't you introduce yourself and, uh, and then we'll get going. Sure. Thank you very much, Rohit. Uh, yeah, I'm Sean Dillman. I'm a lawyer and a legal technology coach. I'm really excited to be here today. OneNote is a product that I've actually been using since the start of law school uh, and then through about five years of legal practice. So I've kind of seen it from both sides, you know, using it as a student and then moving from student life into legal practice into private practice and realizing the different changes that I needed to make to use it to make it applicable to legal practice. One of the things that I, I was speaking with lawyers about recently with respect to OneNote is to keep in mind that it, it's not software that was made by Microsoft, which is specific to legal practice. Microsoft does not make uh, any software that I'm aware of that is specific for legal practice. So it, it is general purpose software. However, it is very powerful. It's very versatile, as we'll be demonstrating. And there's great ways that you can share it with other people, your staff, uh, virtual assistants, clients on a limited basis, etc. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here today and to be, to be looking at OneNote and seeing how working with OneNote note together with matter 365 it's actually even even better and it, it covers all of the bases that you need for legal practice all right um so i guess the first place to start is talking about the different versions of one note uh, people who are matter 365 users know that when we link to one note it opens up the one note uh in microsoft 365 so some people call that one note 365 but there are two versions that are actually on your desktop there's a OneNote for Windows 10, which comes automatically with your Windows 10 operating system. It also connects seamlessly to your Microsoft 365 products, but there's also an older version of OneNote, previously called OneNote 2016. You'll notice the, the key difference with this is they've got the sections across the top and the pages down the right. We're not going to get too far into the discussion about OneNote 2016 or this particular version of OneNote because there are some limitations in how it connects with Office 365 groups in the cloud. And it, it makes it a little bit difficult to, to use it and keep everybody connected to the same thing. So we're introducing this to let you know that it is out there. Some of you may still be using it, but a lot of the features that you're used to and that you love, you're going to find in the Windows 10 product. So I'm going to load that up here. There's also a, an, an important note here, which is I'm looking at a, a web page, which is suggesting that support for OneNote 2016 actually ended in October of last year. So if a person's on OneNote 2016, they are essentially, you know, Microsoft is going to, has canceled support and, you know, you may kind of get kicked off and forced off in the future anyway. So I just want to bring that to, to people's attention as well. I think it's a, an important note. No, I think that is very important. Note. So if you are one of those OneNote 2016 uh, original OG users, now's a good time to start switching over because as you know, or if you're not aware, once Microsoft stops supporting something, it's almost guaranteed to get glitchy and even start failing within a year. So now's a good time to move over. And actually, OneNote for Windows 10 has some features that do not exist in OneNote 2016. One of them is actually a, a really simple but important thing, which is that there's a, a feature that you can use to sort pages. And then the, the second really important feature is the ability to dictate right into uh, OneNote for Windows 10 using your microphone. So dictate right into right into the software. So if you're if you're using an assistant, uh, and if, if you're still using tapes and recorders, and you have that kind of a, a dictation system happening, then you may start being able to dictate yourself. Or if, if you still want your assistant to dictate, they can dictate directly into OneNote. Yeah, for those who aren't using or aren't familiar with OneNote, you know, we're going to get into some of the features a little bit later. But when it comes to organization, the hierarchy and the way that it's organized is essentially if you think of this as a, as a binder of things, of notes and other things you want to keep track of. The way we set it up in Matter 365 is that every matter will have its own notebook. 
that's the main level of organization that you can say. So you think of the your one note as a binder or the notebook is the binder itself. Then within each notebook, they have different sections. So you can determine, you know, any number of sections based on whatever organization makes sense for you. But then within each section, you have a number of pages. So the sections could be the dividers that group aggregate notes in, in a particular way. And then each page can be its own note. So it's very versatile in the way you want to organize it because you can add as many sections as you want. You can have as many pages within each section as you want, but whatever makes sense. So for most people, what they would normally write down in a notebook that they keep next to their computer or a pad of paper next to their desk, they can keep it here. So you can record all the phone calls that you've had, any notes to file that you have in the system, record notes of meetings that you've had. There's a lot of different ways to organize it. We're not going to dictate what that should be do whatever feels right for you. But within this, uh, within these section and these notes, there are ways that you can resort them. And this is a fairly new feature in OneNote for Windows 10 that they didn't have in 2016. So you can sort them alphabetically. The Each section or each page name will be at the top, but you also see there'll be a date stamp for whenever you create it. So that allows you to, to sort it by date created. So then you go chronologically from the oldest back to the uh, newest. Or if you click it again, it's going to resort it the other way. But you can also do it by date modified. So you can see which notes have been most recently modified. If you're coming in, looking at notes to file or meetings, and it's not automatically clear, you can sort it by date modified to find out when the last person had done anything with it. And so that's kind of the basic. Okay, so now that we've covered some basic organization of OneNote, we can get into a discussion about some of the features that will help you use it to its full effect. All right. So Sean had discussed initially one of you know, talking about the dictation feature. And that's something that I think most lawyers are probably, you know, whenever you were trained uh, as a lawyer, you may have been trained how to dictate properly. Or if you're a relatively new call or more of a self-serve lawyer, you probably can type faster than most people can dictate. But what's great about the dictation feature is that it allows you to quickly get notes onto the page without having to fuss with formatting or mess around with it. All right. So in the dictation, it's quite easy. Just hit the dictate button. It's going to ask for your microphone. Hit it allow. And now it's going to dictate everything that I say into a document, period. New line. Some of the punctuation, comma, that you're typically used to using, semicolon, will be recognized as it will full stop, period, and a new paragraph. So you can see that it's a quick and easy way when you're getting off the phone with somebody or you're just walked out of a meeting. Rather than having to furiously write your notes down, you can quickly dictate it into the system. And then the best part about OneNote, which we didn't really discuss before, is that if you are saving everything to your notebook in using the OneNote version either in the cloud, or if you're using the OneNote for Windows 10, all of it's going to be uh, automatically synchronized across all the devices and across all the users. So anybody who has access to this notebook is going to see these changes automatically, and it keeps everybody on the same page, which is the key to keeping everybody coordinated and collaborating properly. And a really great feature that we've discussed as well is if you're using the OneNote app on your smartphone, you can actually also dictate directly from your smartphone into the, the page where you want the note to go. As an example, let's say, uh, let's say you're walking to the courthouse and a client calls you, uh, you've got a little bit of time before you're appearing. Uh, so you take the call, you speak with the client. As soon as you get off the phone with the client, what you can do is you can navigate to the page within that client's matter and you can actually dictate it right into your phone. Okay, so here I am on my smartphone. I'm going to click as if I'm writing a note, but instead of starting to type, I'm just going to push this microphone button here. Okay, period. As you can see, I am now dictating a memo using my smartphone, period. This is working very well and essentially capturing everything that I'm saying, period. The client just called me on the way to the courthouse and advised me that he would be late for our meeting in the afternoon, period. Okay, something like that anyway. And then this uh, memo will, it'll appear uh, in, the, in the page where I put it. The next feature uh, that we wanted to show you is the ease with which you can use OneNote for 
web clipping. And web clipping is a, you know, it's a quick and easy way when you're when you're searching things on the internet, whether it's related to your work or not. Uh, I've got here, I've got a, a, a Canly, which is the Canadian uh, legal database. So you can do your research for cases that you need for court. And when you find something of interest, rather than downloading the entire case, getting the PDF of it, then going back in and highlighting it, if you just want to get a quick copy of what's going on, you can just do a quick select copy if you go back to OneNote for Windows 10, if you want to go into your case law research, I'm doing some research on trademarks. If I just paste it directly in here, it's actually going to paste not only the text that is in there, but it's always going to give you this link back to where you actually got it from. So it's a great way to not having to create cross references. You can create these quick little memos or quick little research excerpts in OneNote and always know where, the, where, where you're cutting from and where you're pasting from. So that's a quick and easy way of doing it. You know, the great thing about this is it doesn't actually have to only be from uh, Canly or, or, you know, some sort of a website with case law. You know, you could do it if you were going to a news organization's website. If you copy and paste in a link from there, it'll also include the hyperlink or any other kinds of websites. You know, you can just link in things from Google or, or, uh, or LinkedIn or other social media websites. Uh, it'll, it'll support a variety of links. And the greatest part about OneNote is the fact that it's always synchronizing to the cloud. So you can see this little Clyde icon up here to show that the sync status when the check mark is OK. So you can actually go into other versions of it. So I can see here I'm in the online version now. And there it is. That thing I pasted a few moments ago is already synced to this, even though I'm accessing it through Microsoft 365 Cloud. The next feature uh, that I wanted to show you guys is something that, depending on how you use it, uh, can either be really very useful or can end up clogging it a little bit. But that's what they call these, these tags. So in the Windows 10 version of it, you, they give you a small subset of tags that you can use, but it also allows you to create new tags and it allows you to know which tags have been used in this notebook. But the way that you can use tags is a great way to sort of give yourself little reminders or a little, you know, almost little sticky notes on the side to show you what you're using for. So if something is important, you can tag it as important. And the reason why you want to tag things is that later on you can search according to the tags. So if you're looking for different tags, depending on which ones you've been using, you can search for all of those where you have a tag to do or actually a little too overused. Uh, you can do a status report tag, you know, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and let's put in the important. And it'll show you where that tag is, and then it'll show you everywhere you have that tag. So this can be used to help quickly search across all your various notebooks to see where this tag has been used. But one way that I think that it's probably the best way to use is we create a custom tag called status report. And by doing that status report, and I know I said I'm not going to tell you guys how you should use OneNote, but I am going to tell you this. The status report is an important tag for a couple of different reasons. Because the OneNote for Windows 10 is actually searching across all of your notebooks, this is a great way for you to get an update as to where, the, where each of your matters stand. So if you are looking at the various pages, you can have particular pages that you call status report in each of your matters. And then when you do a search for it, you're going to be able to look at those pages and say, okay, what's going on in, uh, you know, Colin Stern matter. Okay, I know the claim was filed. The deadline's August 15th. That's the next thing that's coming up. What's going on in Joel Taylor? Oh, here we go. We've got examination for discovery scheduled December. You know, and you can quickly sort of roll through all of your matters because it is going to be searching through all of your notebooks. And as you recall, every notebook or every matter will have its own notebook. So if you consistently use this status report, either as a, a tag within your notebook or as a page name itself, you know that you're always going to find what you're looking for. So that's a great way that you can do it. But as I mentioned before, you know, there's a few tags that you can include here. If you are using the Windows version, or sorry, the online version of OneNote, when you go into tags, you don't have the ability to create custom tags, nor do you have the ability to use the tags that you just created. So it's a little bit more difficult to actually create the tags and use them when you're on uh, the online version of OneNote. So for that reason, you may want to use the desktop version when you're doing your tagging. And then also in the online version, when you're searching, 
it does not search across all of your notebooks. It's only going to keep it to the notebook that you're in. So that's another little bit of limitation that you have when you're searching in the online version. And the way Matter 365 deals with comparing the desktop version, the online version is in the important links section. You'll see if I click on OneNote, if I click here, that's going to open the online version. But there's a little button in the upper right that'll actually open the desktop, and that's the Windows 10 version. So if you're looking to do any real work in the notes, create notes, scan through your notes, use the desktop. But the OneNote online version is great for a quick review to see what's happening on a particular case or where you can quickly add stuff. And in a lot of situations, you know, a person probably does want to use the desktop application as their kind of primary um, version of OneNote. It, you know, generally it should be faster than the web version because essentially all of your data is going to be synced to your local hard drive, which means that you don't actually need to access the cloud to access the data. As part of my practice, you know, I, I use multiple computers. I've got a PC at the office, and then I've got multiple laptops that I do I, I use for different purposes. But on all of my laptops, laptops, I have my practice files. And on occasion, you know, if, if I if I don't have internet access, I'm somewhere where I don't have internet access. If I'm on an airplane and I've got it on airplane mode, I still have all of my files with me and I can access them locally. So I think as a bit of a best practice, we'd, we'd probably suggest that you, you try to use the desktop application as much as possible as opposed to the web portal version. And if you do that, you know, the part of the added benefit, as, as Rohit was saying, you know, you, you don't have have access to the tags in this web version, but if you're using the desktop version, there's no problem. You, you will have access to your tags. And if you ever end up accidentally or you open up the online version and you want to see it in the desktop version, rather than opening the desktop and searching to find where you're looking for, you can just click on this open a desktop app right here. Uh, and it's going to open up that exact notebook, that exact section, and that exact page as soon as you launch. So it's another quick way of getting back and forth between them. They make it really easy to go back and forth. And one tag that I wanted to suggest, and this would be kind of a note for the litigators out there, a tag that I would use, a custom tag, was limitation date or, or is limitation date. It's important that you are diarizing limitation dates in your calendar. It's important that you are conducting routine review to ensure that limitation dates are always is respected and observed and you know the last thing that any of us want to do is miss a limitation date however I also would note them just as, as another line of defense, um, I produce a limitation date tag and would tag those as appropriate within my OneNote so that as Rohit was showing, if I went and used the search function and if I searched just for that tag, I could look at all of my limitation dates. And if I wanted to do a periodic review and just kind of click through them as, as he was just showing, I can do that. And you know, the sky is kind of the limit, you know, the way that you organize your practice, you know, the law you practice, how you practice practice it, how you keep notes, how you like to see information, you know, that's that's going to be personal to every single person. But this software is really flexible. So if you want to add custom tags for certain things, you can do that in OneNote. Will, OneNote will work with you on that. Yeah. And the other thing to note about tags is uh, you don't have to tag the entire page. You can tag just one line in a page. So if I want to tag this as important, it's actually going to apply it just to this line. So you can have multiple tags within each page. So if you want to note a limitation period as well as a follow-up and a status report, all of those tags can be simultaneously added to different portions of the line. If you want the entire page to be tagged, obviously you can just tag the page itself or the page title itself to do that. The next thing I wanted to, to show you is the way that, you know, you'll see this meeting report here, the way that you can actually use Outlook in conjunction with with OneNote to keep yourself organized. So if you are receiving certain email and you want to make sure, like, I have to stay on top of this, I need to keep track of this email, you can actually send an Outlook email directly to OneNote. The way it's done in the web version, you would just click on the send to OneNote. It's going to open up a little sidebar, and then you get to pick where that email gets stored. So if this is in relation to a particular matter, in addition to storing it in the matters shared inbox, the way we do it in, in Matter 365, you can actually send it into a particular note. So it's going to show you your most recent sections, but then all your notebooks will show up down below. So if you want to store it into a particular matter, you should pick that matter's notebook, put it into phone calls or whatever else is available and hit save. And now it's going to send a copy of that email into OneNote. So now if I open up this notebook, we're going to see in a second under phone calls, there's that email. 
So it's going to put in, it's going to save it. And there's a couple of things to, of note. It's going to put in the date that you saved the email and the time, but in the actual body of the note, it's going to put in the date and time it was email sent, what the subject line was. You can click here to get link it back to the Outlook. It's going to open up the email in Outlook, who it's from, who it's to, and then the body of the email is here. So it's another great way to sort of keep track of some... It, some important emails, I know that I have used this in my own practice, often when I'm giving flat fee or fixed fee quotes to clients, I need to remember what I said. So when they call back three to six months later, when they've shopped around and realized that I'm the most appropriately priced, I can know exactly what I said to them. And I save that into the OneNote under a prospect file, but with their name in it. So I can just search quickly for their name and I'll find this note. The other thing that you can do in Outlook is actually put in notes as it relates to meetings. So whether it's a court date or any other meeting, anytime you actually want to quickly create a note of what's happening in that meeting or what did happen at the time, you can quickly just click any event sent to one note. I'm going to send this back to my Charles and Dunn meetings, hit save, and now it's going to open up I can hit here to open it into one note or I can navigate back here, go into my meetings. And then there's that one I just created. And again, it's going to automatically date stamp when you actually created it, but the meeting itself will show up here. And then you can quickly type your notes. One of the really powerful things about being able to put items from your calendar as well as email items into OneNote is to go back to that ability to share it with staff or share it with other people in your organization. In addition to it being good for your own record keeping and your own file structure and your, your own organizational structure, it's also good for sharing it with other people. For example, any of us has an email address that is our first and last name at our firm dot com or, or whatever, your staff doesn't necessarily have access to your email inbox and, and nor would you, you know, necessarily want them to. So if you want to share an email with somebody and you don't want to forward it to them either, because that's not necessarily a best practice, you know, because it's not like you want to include them in the thread or you don't want to necessarily share the email in that way. By putting it here under um, the Dunn and Mills file, putting this court date, I can say, hey, Sam, well, actually, once your system gets rolling, there's certain things that you don't need to tell your staff about, hey, I put the information in OneNote, it's just gonna be in OneNote, right? So Sam and Kelly, in my example, they will be able to see this information about this court date. As Rohit is typing right now, they'll be able to see new trial date is April 15th, 2022, please diarize. So they can see that information uh, we can also put a tag on it. We can tag it as important. So if Sam knows that it's her job every morning to uh, check the uh, check the new tags, check important tag, or if in your firm you wanted to make a tag called like new items tag, let's say that Sam is the more experienced assistant. Sam does air traffic control, so to speak. Sam is responsible for finding the new items and then either doing them or delegating, then Sam can see, oh, there's a new trial date. It's been set to April 15th, 2022. Either Sam can diarize that or Sam can have that be done by another assistant and say, hey, somebody please diarize this. And you, you see how bringing it into OneNote changes the form to some degree. It takes it out of Outlook, but we're showing you why you would want to do that and the kind of power that you can access through OneNote by changing its form. And in ultimately, however you use OneNote, uh, I use it as a sort of transfer or sharing of knowledge because you may know what happened at that particular court date because you're Mike Smith and you were there. No one else in your firm knows unless you tell them. And rather than going around and telling everybody individually what happened or, you know, the young associate who did all the, the actual real work on that motion that you went and argued that day wants to know what happened, they didn't come with you to court. By putting the results or what happened at that court date directly into OneNote, that you're automatically transferring all that knowledge and experience that you had that particular day to everyone else in your firm that's working with you. So it makes it very easy to make sure that everybody that you're collaborating and you're working with is working from the same page. We're all working from the same set of information. And so for that reason, I think that's why it's important to 
put things in a place where everyone has access to them. And OneNote can be that place for you, depending on how you want to organize it. But there's, you know, a thousand different ways you can use it. Again, we're not going to tell you how to do it. But the one last feature that we wanted to talk about is version control. So you can see here that somebody may have put notes in and then you saved it and go back to it later on. But if you want to see what the changes are, you can quickly right click on any page and you can click on show versions. All right. So uh, if you go back to any particular call, depending on the changes that were made, and because these these notes, and, and I should also make uh, make everybody aware of this, uh, you can, these pages are not limited to what you can see on the screen. You can keep taking notes and go on and on and on and on and on, all the way down and you just keep scrolling and it keeps going and going and going and going and going. So there is really no limitation of how much information you get on any one particular page, but obviously for the sake of organization, uh, it might be best not to have uh, too many pages involved. So if you're looking to see, you know, because this, you can have a nearly unlimited amount of data on any one particular page, you might want to see what's new, what, how it's been changed over time. And you can do that. If you do a right click over every any page, you can come down and hit show versions. And then you'll see every time that page has been edited over time and you can see what the changes are of what it looked like at any one particular time. It's not gonna show you that neat black line view that you would normally get in Word, but you can actually go back to see what the versions are over time and then compare that to what the new one is. So that can be important. And again, this goes back to the organization that we were showing you here is that if I go back to the calls, the same way that I was, you can actually sort it that's why you can sort it on date modified, because then you can see those times that things were changed uh, most recently. And again, here we can check the page versions and here it shows it off to the side. And this does actually show you the highlighted changes. So these are some of our favorite features in OneNote. This is just a brief introduction. Obviously, the, the system is going to be as powerful as you need it to be because it's as flexible as it is. But if you have any other questions and you want to reach out to us, I'm happy to answer any of them. You, of course, can reach me at rohit at matter365.com. And Sean is available as well. He does legal tech training in addition to OneNote, but with all aspects of legal technology. And uh, Sean, why don't you let people know how they can contact you? Yeah, please. I'm, I'm easy to find online. Uh, if you check out my website, it's seandillman.com, and that links to all of all of the things that I'm working on. Uh, you can send me an email at lawyer at Um But if you wanted to connect with me on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever method works best for you, yeah, please don't don't hesitate. I love this stuff. I'm, I'm really passionate about Microsoft software. I've been using it, you know, basically since I started using computers, which is a long, long time ago at this point. And Matter 365, I'm a huge fan. I think it's so brilliant to put together, to, to take all of the great things that Microsoft has for us and has already built, which is very solid, very powerful. Um, and it seems to just be getting better all the time. You know, Office 365, you know, I just can't, I can't say enough good things about Office 365. So Matter 365 for me and for legal practice is just such a, such a brilliant way to, to take a system that's already extremely powerful and then add the things that we need, like the conflict check, like time tracking, uh, you know, like the integration with, with accounting, uh, like reports, uh, expenses, you know, all of the, all of those other things. So yeah, if you need to get in touch with me, please do. Um, I'd be happy to chat about uh, about any any uh, any of the things that we've talked about. All right. Well, thank you, Sean. Uh, and again, if anybody has any questions about one note in particular or anything else, we're happy to talk about it. All right. Thanks again, Sean, for joining us, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this seminar. Thank you. Thanks.